Greetings, my friends, in the name of the Triune God, the God who is always with us. I am Debbie Bartley, and I am honored to serve as one of First St. Charles' associate pastors. And yes, I've got a frog in my throat, so just bear with me as my voice sounds a little bit different. And it has been a few weeks since we have been together in this place. And I pray that you have stayed well and enjoyed our warmer weather. The trees are green, the flowers are blooming, gardens are growing, and allergies continue. My friends are here with me, and we're all set up for a picnic. We're all set to gather around the table, so to speak, with each other. And who doesn't love a picnic? So I have set a simple table here to introduce the theme for today in my next three devotionals. I will be sharing from Bishop United Methodist Bishop Karen P. Alavedo's book, Together at the Table, Diversity Without Division in the United Methodist Church. Bishop Alavedo is the first openly lesbian bishop of the United Methodist Church, and her book shares her journey of being called to ordain ministry within a denomination that is struggling to be in ministry with persons like her. And I, too, am on a journey of being called to ordain ministry within a denomination that is struggling to be in ministry with our LGBTQ friends and family members. My journey is one of empathy and acceptance of allowing all people to be their true selves at all times and in all places. So throughout these devotionals, I hope that together we, you and I, can grow in empathy towards those whose definitions are not the same as ours, to grow in love with each other embracing our differences in our descriptors to accept each other period as beloved children of god all of us created in god's image and all of us loved by god and that all does mean all so june is pride month which occurs in the united states and around the world to commemorate the stonewall riots which occurred at the end of June 1969. The riots were in New York City in response to clashes with the police at the Stonewall Inn, a gay establishment. And as a result, many pride events are held during this month of June to recognize the impact that LGBTQ persons have in the world. Now, in the midst of June, in addition to all that is connected to pride, we also have Juneteenth, June 19th, commemorating the emancipation of those who were enslaved. So June is an important month for who we are, who we have been, and who we can be. And so pride itself is an acronym for personal rights in defense and education. And the organization was formed in Los Angeles, California in 1966 by Steve Ginberg. June is an important month, as I said, and especially for those of us with privilege who need to acknowledge all of these events, whether we want to or not. For it is in acknowledging that with which we are unsure of, may be afraid of, ambivalent toward, are afraid of, that we can grow in empathy towards those directly affected by history and in our present world. Part of my journey is wanting and seeking to speak without harming others. I don't always get it right. I won't always get it right. And I invite you to journey with me. And together we can grow in love and grace together. And if I do say something harmful, or if I need to rephrase how I speak, please share this with me in the comments. So I begin by sharing that I am a straight, white, cisgender female whose hair is now gray 
and is living in the second half of her life. Now, why I shy away from labels or descriptors or definitions of people, sometimes it is helpful. So I share that I am straight, which means that I am not a lesbian. My whiteness is obvious, and I am a cisgender female, which means I am the gender of my birth, not a transgender female. So why does this matter? Well, it only matters to those who need to define me. And it matters in some of what I'll be sharing because some of what I'll share will be in the third person because I had no personal experience. It also matters in that I can only experience and know that which is me. So what bothers me about labels, as it does Bishop Oliveda, is that as soon as we label or define ourselves, we immediately define and label others. They're either like us or they're not. And this, my friends, gets to the root of why this journey is so important. As the bishop says, when there is an othering of those who are different, there is an unwillingness to sit and share life together. When we define ourselves, we can temporarily define our understanding of who we are not. Bishop Oliveto chose the table as the point of reference for her book because the family table is where we can learn much as we embrace each other through the connectedness of family. And then she also refers to the communion table where we can connect as children of God Yet both tables have their issues. And yet both tables have their issues. The family dinner table is now a scarcity as fewer families eat a meal together. Maybe we go on a picnic together, but we don't sit down at the table very much together anymore. And the communion table is open only on one side to those who are invited to come to the table, yet not to those who are granted sacramental authority to the table. Now, many of us, me included, don't give it a second thought about who we are and whether we are accepted by others. Now, at times I am painfully reminded that I am a female and at other times I'm getting older. Yet for the most part, I am able to fully be myself without fear of rejection. The color of our skin is obvious and people either accept us or they don't. However, our gender identity is not so obvious. Presumptions are made based on our outward appearance. Acceptance can be offered or not based on our presumptions. And for many of our LGBTQ friends and family members, fear of not being accepted means that they live their lives in the closet, unable to fully be themselves. Now, I cannot imagine not being able to be myself. Can you? I hope you will open your heart and your mind to journey with me. Whether we agree or whether we agree to disagree, my prayer is that we will at least be open to listening to each other. Now I leave you with a couple of questions to ponder, and they are, can we listen to lives that are different from ours? Can we be open to God's voice? Can we open ourselves to loving those who are different from us? Let's pray. Dear God, as we gather at this table, I offer you the simple table blessing that I have learned as I grew up. Dear God, thank you for this food. Bless it for its intended use and us to your service. And we ask and pray all of this in your son Jesus' holy name. Amen. So friends, let's invite everyone to our tables so that we can share God's love and grace with everyone. Let's continue to stay safe Let's continue to connect to each other as we continue to connect to God. And let's share God's love with everyone 
today, tomorrow, and every day.